Okay, so I've got a turbojet. So again, what I have is a diffuser, compressor, combustor, turbine, and the nozzle. Okay, I've got a bunch of efficiencies given in there. I basically know what's coming in. I also know what goes into the turbine, and I know the pressure coming out. Okay. The other thing that I know is that the compressor ratio is 12. Now, I'm going to have to keep track of when I set my states, not only my H values, I'm also going to have to keep track of my P values because I use pressure ratios and relative pressures for a lot of these isentropic processes. So when I go look up this first one, I'm going to look up both HA and PRA. Okay, uh, because I'm going to need relative pressures and pressures kind of at each state so I can, can go through this. Okay, so at 420 degrees Rankin, you see that H is 100.32 and PR is 0.576. So I'll go ahead and jot those guys down. And then uh, 0 0.576. Okay. Um, so, uh, going from state A to s state one, okay, I have a diffuser, okay, isentropic, okay, but essentially with the diffuser, there's no work, there's no heat transfer, therefore the change in enthalpy basically equals the change in kinetic energy. I'm going to assume that the velocity here is zero okay it's not actually zero but we're you know it's insignificant compared to the 750 feet per second that's coming in okay so what i have then is h1 minus ha that change in enthalpy equals h or i'm sorry va squared over two minus zero again because the final the kinetic energy here we're going to assume is zero Okay, so from that, I can find that H1 equals HA plus VA squared over 2. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this because the units on this are a little goofy, and I want to make sure everybody remembers how to do that. So again, HA is 100.32, and that is BTUs per pound mass. Okay, of course, VA is 750 squared over two and the units on this are going to be feet squared per second squared okay so i need to do two conversions here the first is going to be basically gravity that uh one pound force equals 32.2 pound mass feet per second squared that's what one pound force equals so when i have that one of those feet kills one of those Oops, not that. That. Second squareds cancel out like that. So now I have foot pounds per pound mass, which means I need to take a time or divide it by uh, 778 foot pound force in every BTU. Okay. From all of that, I can calculate that H1 then equal, well, let me finish that, pound force kills pounds force, feet kills feet, and I have BTUs per pound mass, okay? So from that, I get H1 equals 111.55. So H1 equals 111.55. Now from this, I'm going to calculate... Uh, PR1, well, I'm not going to calculate, I'm going to look it up, and then knowing that P1 over PA equals PR1 over PRA, because the diffuser is isentropic, I can then calculate P1. And again, I need to keep track of my pressures as well as I move through, and it'll become clear as I, as I go through why I need to do that. Okay, so I go look up 111 for H which puts me right in here, which gives me a PR of uh, 11.5. Well, of course, I don't have it here. So I'm just going to put an approximate on this. So it's 111. That's pretty close to halfway. We'll call it 
0.85 approximately. Okay, so we'll say it's approximately 0 0.85. Okay, using that down here, I can absolutely find that P1 then is 13.05 psi. So P1 equals 13.05, and again, that's doing this pressure ratio equivalent to that pressure ratio. Again, that's an approximate. You can do the um, interpolation yourself to get the exact value. Okay, so that gives me state one. Now, state two, I have the compressor ratio of 12, which means that PR2 over PR1 equals P2 over P1, which equals 12. Okay, therefore, I can calculate PR2 equaled to, and this is actually PR2S because this is an isentropic process. Okay, and I've got an efficiency, so I need to find that first, and that's 10.019. So PR2S is 10.019. Gives me an H2S equal to uh, 10 point, pretty much just 10. Can scroll down. And I get H equals 227.29. Okay. Okay. Now, my pressure, wait, hold on. Uh, let me go ahead and find my H2 because that's what I have next in my notes. I'm going to use the fact that I have a compressor efficiency of 80%. Okay. And I'm going to use. H2S minus H1 divided by H2 minus H1. Again, I know everything here. I know the compressor efficiency. I know H2S. I know H1. That gives me H2 equal to 243.07. So that means H2 is 243.07. Okay. Okay, and I can find my pressure at 2, because again, I know my compressor efficiency is just 12, so it's just 13.05 uh, times 12, and I get 156.6, okay, which is also, because now I go into the combustor, that's also P3. Now I know, I know temperature 3, so I'm going to go ahead and look up H3, and I'm going to need PR3 because then I go into the turbine, and that's going to help me figure out what's going on with the turbine there. Well, we'll talk about the turbine in a second, but let me go ahead and look up these values. Okay, so for 2400 degrees Rankin, I'm way over here, 2400, I get H of 617.22 and a PR of 367.6. So I get... Uh, 617.22, and I get a 367.6. Now, here's the thing about the turbine. Remember, the turbine runs the compressor. So I can actually directly find H4 just from the equation that basically H3 minus H4. 4 equals H2 minus H1. And that's because, again, you know, this is essentially the uh, compress, and uh, that's the turbine, runs the compressor. So again, I know all of these values, 1, 2, and 3. I can therefore easily find H4, which I find to be 45.7. Okay, that sets state four. However, I need to find the pressure. Now, in order to find the pressure, okay, I need to find out what H4S actually is. Okay, why? Because I need to relate the relative pressures, and the relative pressures are due to the ideal situation. 
So I need to calculate, so this is going a little backwards. I know H4 now, I actually need to find H4S so that I can find the pressure, okay? However, the equation, you know, it's just the turbine efficiency, okay? And the turbine efficiency is H3 um, minus uh, H4 divided by H3 minus H4. S. Now again, I know H3, I know H4, I know the turbine efficiency. The only thing I don't know is H4S. I calculate it and I find H4S is 471.09. Now again, why did I bother to do this? The whole idea is I need P4 here. So now that I have H4S, I can look up PR4S and use the relative pressure ratio to find what P4 actually is. So let me go ahead and look up what PR4S is. That would be the isentropic uh, situation. So at 471, I'm over here, and I get a PR4 of uh, 130. My values here cannot be right. 135. Oh, was I looking in? Uh, I was looking in U values. Sorry, I need H values. Excuse me. Okay, no, they, they can't be right. Okay, 471. I'm right over here. 471, which means that my PR value, there it is, is 135.24. Okay, so... This is 135.24, okay? Now, uh, I'll just do this quickly right here. I can find P4 knowing P3 and PR4S over PR3. Again, because that's the isentropic situation, I need that so I can use the relative pressure because that only works in the isentropic case. So from that, I can actually calculate P4 equals 57.61 PSI. Now, this is why I needed the pressure, because ultimately now I need to figure out what's going on at state 5, and I can use the pressure ratio. Okay? Uh, I guess I also need the actual PR4 now which I hope I have. I do not, but I do need it, okay? So I need the actual PR4, and I'll, I'll approximate this one so that I can find PR5S, okay? So let me go ahead and um, look that up. So again, I'm at, this is for the actual H4, 485.7, which is right in here. So that's 485.7, a little closer to the top one. That is, we'll call it one, we'll call it approximately 150, something like that. Okay. And again, you can do the interpolation to figure it out yourself. So this is the actual PR4. So I'm going to grab uh, a second sheet of paper here to finish this guy out, okay? So now that I know PR4, okay, to find PR5S, I divide that by PR4 equals P5 uh, over P4. Again, I know my pressure ratio. I know the relative pressure at 4 from this. I can find the ideal relative pressure at state 5, which is 23.627. So I'm going to use that to look up H5S. So at 23.67 for PR, I'm over here, gives me an H value of 289.93. So 289.93, and that's what PR, or I'm, 
that's a uh, whoops. That's what HSPR put that over here. Twenty three point six two seven. Okay, and I've got H. 5S, that was the uh, 289.93. Okay, so now I've got H5S, that's the ideal. Now, from that, I can actually find the ideal velocity, which is H, or I'm sorry, V5S. And the way I find that is essentially by the, again, the, the, the previous equation I had down here for the diffuser, okay, a similar equation to that, and I can find that, uh, well, uh, let's do it this way, H, uh, H5 minus H4 equals um, 0 minus v 5 s squared over 2. And again, this would be H5s. So the ideal velocity would be based on the ideal enthalpy. Knowing H4 and V5s, I can calculate V5s. Okay, so the ideal velocity coming out would be 31, 32. And that would be uh, feet per second. However, I have a nozzle efficiency of 92%. Okay, And what you'll remember, hopefully, from the nozzle efficiency is that the nozzle efficiency is actually um, V5 squared over V5S squared. Okay, from that I know my nozzle efficiency, I know V5S, I can find V5, and this is the answer I'm actually looking for, is 3,004 feet per second. Now, that is a whole lot, that was a very long problem, hopefully you followed it. The trickiest part is not necessarily finding the H values, those actually went okay, it's a lot of these finding these P values and then knowing which, you know, where the pr 5 s's are versus the pr 5s you know the you know the ideal versus the um, the actual keeping track of those is where it's tricky so hopefully you're able to follow along okay using the relative pressures the actual pressures the h values knowing that the turbine runs the compressor lots of things to remember in these uh, turbojet problems